Rafael Nadal has been named ambassador for the Saudi Tennis Federation. We explain what that means for Rafa and how the world of tennis is reacting to the news. Plus, we're into the second round at the Australian Open. Who will make it to the last 32? The break starts right now. Hey everyone, I'm Andrew Tyree and you're watching The Break. On Monday, Rafael Nadal was named ambassador for the Saudi Tennis Federation, a job that would mean promoting and growing the sport of tennis in Saudi Arabia. According to a press release from the Federation, that includes spending a dedicated time in the kingdom every year to help develop the youth and raise awareness of tennis in the kingdom. Saudi Arabia has been a growing presence in the world of tennis recently. They'll host the ATP's Next Gen Finals through 2027 and are in talks with the WTA to host their year-end championships. Accepting investment from Saudi Arabia could be seen as controversial. Human rights groups have raised red flags for the kingdom due to their treatment of women and their past human rights violations. Saudi Arabia's big investments into sports like Formula One, soccer, golf, and now tennis signal a move to diversify their economy away from oil. Rafa's role as ambassador also includes development on his new academy just outside the capital city of Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Nadal's academy is based in Mallorca, Spain, but hosts camps around the world and has a second academy in Kuwait. Igor Sriantek was asked about Nadal's new role and about the prospect of the WTA finals being held in Saudi Arabia. She told reporters, Obviously, these countries also want to change and improve politically and sociologically. It's not easy to decide. Also, in terms of the many events that were held, there were rumors about sports washing. In my case, because I have nothing to do with Roth and his decisions, it should be up to the federations and the governing bodies to decide if we're going to play there or not. If there would be some negative backlash, they should take the responsibility. For me, it's hard to straightforwardly go one way and say anything. Former pros like John McEnroe and Chris Everett have spoken out against Saudi investments in tennis, saying their human rights violations should prevent the tour from accepting Saudi money. Rafael Nadal said about his new role as ambassador, you can see growth and progress everywhere you look in Saudi Arabia, and I am excited to be a part of that. I still continue to play tennis because I love the game, but away from playing, I want to help sports grow on a large scale around the world. And in Saudi Arabia, there's real potential. We made it to the second round at the Australian Open. Let's check out Tuesday's must-see matches. Keep an eye out for those Corotta boys because Yannick Sinner opens up action on Margaret Quarterina as he faces qualifier Jesper De Jong. Caroline Wozniacki kicks things off on John Kane Arena at 7 p.m. Eastern. She's also playing a qualifier in Maria Timofeva. Anz Jabor will play talented 16-year-old Mira Andriva, and that will be a tough out for Anz. Andriva already has six wins over top 30 opponents in the last nine months. The Americans are also in action as Ben Shelton, Francis Tiafo, and Sebastian Corda all fight for a spot in round three. U.S. Open champ Coco Golf will face Caroline Dolhide at approximately 10 p.m. Eastern. And our very own Chris Eubanks drew Andre Rublev in the second round. We'll see if the Wimbledon quarterfinalists can challenge the fifth seed tonight. And the night session will feature defending champs as Arena Sabalenka faces 16-year-old Brenda Fervitova, while Novak Djokovic takes the court to play Aussie Alexi Poprin under the lights. I might just have to stay up all night to catch that one. Tennis Channel's Australian Open coverage begins daily at 5 p.m. Eastern with TC Live. We will see you tomorrow.